Hello everybody and welcome back to an Isaac Mod Showcase. Today we are looking at Boss Butch. This is a brand new mod that adds 13 new bosses spread throughout Isaac on the alt path and regular path. Lots of new custom bosses, custom animations, different attack patterns. It looks really, really cool from the trailers so far and there's a custom challenge here that allows us to play all of the bosses back to back to back, which I'm really excited for. Uh, now, I will say I am going to be playing with, um, like, so that I can't die. I have got, like, infinite HP because I want to show off all these bosses and not rely on me having to know all the bosses. I want us to be able to see them all. So um, we, it, it, there's not as much risk associated with this, but we will get to see some really, really interesting boss fights. And I will try to make it my goal to not take damage when possible, even though we can't die. Um, but here's our first one. We've got Sparky. This is one of the ones I saw on the trailer. This guy seems to be a burning basement boss. Oh my God. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely burning basement. So we've got some fire out the walls here. Another bit of fire. I'm guessing there's going to be some electricity based attacks just based on his visuals. I like the sound of the popping out. There you go, yeah. Just kind of the popping out of the walls idea. I really like that. It's really cool. Now I wonder if there's going to be more than one of him because there's like multiple holes in the wall here. Also, for the question of the day today, what's a boss from another game that you think would fit really, really well into Isaac? That'd be really interesting to hear because obviously the Isaac has a lot of references. Um, but the all to Edmund based games, not really other games. Oh, there you go. He can he can spawn in through the floor there. So he, he can make himself additional holes, but it's still only one boss. There you go. I like the way he kind of shows you where he's about to pop up first. It's rather nice. Oop. Oh, no. He, he, he's tricking us, though. He's tricking us. He's popping out a few different holes at once. I like the death animation there. Come straight through, and we get a choice between items. Obviously, we're going to take the wire coat hanger here. Um, and we're going to need keys here, so that means we've got to fight these other bosses, I think. We've got Bart, who seems to be a bag of shit. <laughs> like a bag of crap. Yeah, yeah, it literally is. He fires out dips. Okay, so he's like a, 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 a paper bag filled with dog poo. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's like a burning bag as well. Okay, that's really cool. He seems like a really simple boss. This guy seems like definitely one of the easier ones. But this is a burning basement early game boss. That's one thing I'm really happy to see, is that the bosses are sort of in line, in tune with where they appear. One thing that I've always been a bit iffy on with Fiend Folio is, although the bosses on that are really interesting and fun, they often have sort of too many attack patterns or are slightly too complex for where they show up in the game. And this seems very, very, very fitting of where he's appearing. It seems he can set himself on and off fire as well. Um, I do have a bomb to work with here at some point. I don't know when I'm going to use that. Because we're playing as Isaac here. Oh my god, wasn't prepared for that fire. But there you go, he's dead. Oh, that's a cool death animation as well. And there's our key. Okay, cool. So who we got next? Who we got next? We've got ourselves the Radical Rat. Okay, so this is kind of a layout very similar to... I was going to say, very similar to uh, Wrath. And fit, fittingly, it is an explosion-based boss. Um, Got to be careful for him, so... Oh, he's spawning stuff in as well. And these bombs do like a trail of bombs, interesting. They go all the way to the edge of the room. This guy definitely seems like the hardest of the ones we fought so far. Explosions can be a little tricky. Um, and he is firing off an awful, awful lot of them. Gotta be very, very prepared for this guy. I like the way he gets in like a little bin there to hide. That's really cool. He seems to be using these iron blocks as cover, by the way. Like, I don't know if that's on purpose, but... He's, he's, he seems to be actually stepping behind these, which is kind of interesting. Get back here, you. Get back here. Okay. Oop, and then that one's got a bomb strap to it. Oh my god. We've almost got him here. Yeah, he's very clearly using these blocks on purpose here. There's another one taken care of, and we do get another key. Lovely. Obviously, we're hoping for a damage up here. I don't know if the items you get in this challenge are set, or if they are just random boss items. But Pentagram is certainly what we're looking for. Uh, so we're going to have downpour base bosses now. So we've got Mirage. Ooh, so this guy seems kind of interesting. I think I saw this guy in the trailer. Mirage implies something, and I'm going to wait to see if it happens. It did, yeah. He goes underground. I really like this mechanic. Oh, man. He seems kind of tricky. The underground version is probably going to have the more aggressive attacks. Oop, there's like water spouts. Oh, my lord. That is a lot and a lot of shots there. Very interesting. And he's going to dive back on through, yeah. So he's got kind of like a nice version and a mean version. And he's got these bouncy shots, kind of like the dolphin enemies from Fiend Folio have. And there's a lot of lingering shots. Lingering shots make bosses a lot harder when there's like a little less room to work with. Put that in there. We do get extra movement speed when outside of combat, which I like. 
And then we've got Scatman here, which he looks like Ragman. I wonder if he's going to play like Ragman. He's firing a dung ball at me here. What's that dung ball do? Okay, it seems that he fires different dung balls that do different effects. That first one didn't do anything. This one shoots when it hits walls. There's another regular one. So that regular one just bounces around, I presume. And he's doing a bit of peeing, a little bit of creep. Oh, that's a big old dung ball. Okay. What's that going to do? Oh, it has a separate health bar as well, look. It's like its own boss. Doesn't have a ton of health. So he bashes into walls and does a bit of damage with it. And then it splits into multiple types as well. So we've got, we've got a new type there as well. Look, one with a, uh, a fly rotating around it. Whoa! What the hell? What was that? He like kind of harnessed the power of each of them. Oh my lord. He got me with that one. I wonder if all of the balls die when he does. Let's figure that out, shall we? Yes, they do. Okay. Really, really cool boss there as well. Really cool boss there. We're getting pennies, but we ain't got nothing to do with pennies. We got another damage upgrade here. Lovely. Uh, we kind of need that. And let's see who we got here. We got Mozzie. Mozzie seems like it could be difficult. Oh my. So it's basically just like a big one of those energy zapping ones, but for blood. Okay. Look at its little feetsies. It's so engorged. Some fairly simple attacks so far. It doesn't seem super fast or anything. It's a lot of split shots. Oh! Oh! It fired at one of these at me. I kind of expected that, actually. Oh my god, another one of those. That kind of lightning speed there. Oh, damn, it healed on hitting me there. That's really cool. That seems like that could be a really, really hard boss. And this is its death, is it? Oh, it spews out all the remaining blood left in it. Okay. That's really cool. Okay, there's some really creative, like, animations and stuff going on here. So we got our key. And then we're fighting the Dust Devil. So this one looks wild. The animations on that sort of like dust cloud curling around it looks awesome. But we are having some trouble here with the uh, the twirling of these shots. Again, lots of extra lingering shots here. Definitely makes things difficult. What are you going to do now? Okay, you're spreading across the room. Side to side, up and down. We can deal with that. That's easy enough. Easy enough. And another one of these circular ones. At. We're going to dodge and, and wait to see if he has any additional attacks. I don't want to kill him too fast. Taking a lot of damage from him. Oop, he's got like fire shots here. He's eating them up. Is he going to spew those out? Yes, he is. And create some fire along the room. Nice. Oh my god. Imagine if I actually had health here. I'd be screwed. You can actually tell the wind's pulling me in kind of like it does with Mother. Anything more from you? Oop, yep, there you go. Something new. Oh, he's up top. He's up top. And he's diving down. Oh, and the wind's pushing me. Whoa, okay. Okay, okay. Oh my god. I'd be dead by now. <laughs> this guy's definitely the hardest boss, I think, so far. But we got him. He had quite a lot of health as well, actually. These lingering shots are just kind of hanging around. We can get through here now. And we get another fire rate increase. Yes, please. And what we got going on here? Papa Plum? I didn't even think about the, the, the idea of, like, a baby plum family. But it's a really good idea, actually. Ooh, this guy seems aggressive. This guy seems very, very aggressive. Oh, he's spinning. He looks kind of like a, one of those things you get in kebab shops, like one of those meat spinning things. <laughs> this guy's tough. He's got a lot of HP. I mean, we don't have the greatest damage right now, so I can't rank it too heavily on that. This is going to be a necro... Yeah, depths, a depths level uh, area. Oh, my God. Doing shock waves and stuff. Whoa! Whoa! Like an advanced version of the baby plum attack. That's awesome. So many spread shots. I'm really looking forward to seeing the death animations of some of these enemies as well. Okay, he just he just keeled over and died. That wasn't anything super special, but still. Really, really cool boss there. And then we've got Trabacadabra. Okay. It's like a little trash magician. Oop, he just uh he chopped his head off. Interesting. Interesting idea. Is that gonna come back? Yes it is. Okay, so he's got his little hat that he's got a bag of tricks in by the looks of it. Yep. That's uh, that's something. It's pulling towards with that. Okay, we can push him back with it though. Ow! All those shots that like kind of fly in the air can be pretty confusing. I like this this shooting their head off idea. That's kind of cool. We got him. I think we got him. Another pretty interesting one. And what are we on to now? We got an item first. Got mausoleum here. Ooh. Uh, what's going on here? There's three boss rooms, but three boss doors, but. There's a big door in front of us. Is that going to be a unique boss or like the, the ultra boss? What is this? 
Isaac versus Mon Mirus. Ooh, what the hell? Oh, dude, this is Wallmonger from uh, Enter the Gungeon. Whoa, big beam, big beam, big beam. Holy. Wow, okay, this is a very, very cool boss. Coming across this in Mausoleum is going to be exciting. And he's laying down some obstacles for us, that's pretty cool. Oh, and the obstacles are splitting into spike shots. Okay, we got to be keep our distance from them. Quite a lot of health, quite a lot of health. Ooh, damn, okay. we got to do side to side here, I see. There you go. And then the little burns inside the wall are firing stuff as well. How long is this room going to be? Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, this is going to be a boss I take a lot of damage on on a typical run, I think. I like it, though. It's difficult. Mausoleum bosses tend to do, do tend to be a little more difficult, so certainly not a bad thing to see. Oh, my God. Uh, side to side. The side to side is difficult. That's very, very similar to the good old uh, warmonger there. Okay, we got that one. So we can't go back in there now. So it's side to side here. Oh, we need keys for this. So we need to go this way first, most likely. And we got some sort of shop. Another damage upgrade, lovely. Go up, and we get Tulip. Tulip is interesting here. Whoa. Oh, man. I don't know what's going on with Tulip here, but oh, it's got, like, creepy walking legs. It's got creepy legs. Oh, Lord. It's sketchy. It's fired some stuff in the air. The spores landing. Let's try and destroy those before they whip at us. Oop, oop, oop. What is that? I'm surprised the legs don't do any damage when they move, but I'm, I'm kind of glad for it. That might be quite cruel. Ooh, what are you doing now? Oh, God. Okay, they, they do whip you. Um, I'm unsure exactly how you're meant to dodge this attack. Hmm. How are you meant to dodge that? That guy's tricky. That guy is very, very tricky. Oh, dude, he's got like a little guy inside it. What the hell? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And then here we've got the Duke of Flies, weirdly. <laughs> I don't know why the Duke of Flies is here. Oh, what the f... Is that the Duke of Blur? That is quite creative. What on earth? The Duke of Blur? Okay, this is... This is genius. This is evil genius. I love it. This is why we have the invincibility on right now. There ain't no way I'd be working this out first time around. Whoa, this is so cool. Yeah, I was just like, what, what, what's Duke of Flies doing that? I, I didn't see this in the trailer or anything, so I completely wasn't expecting this. Okay, and then the blow actually drops out eventually, so you can kill them separately. And you just gotta fight regular old blow for a little while. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, man. That's so cool. Okay, so how many more bosses do we have? We can't have a lot left, surely. It's going to be a, p a bit of a shorter video, guys, but I think it's worth it for a showcase like this. We get Pisces here. We're onto the corpse now, so we've got Brain Rot. Ooh, this guy's huge. Okay, so it's kind of like a brain with a worm embedded inside it, controlling it. Whoa! Got those mother shots going on. And then we've got a few of these guys doing the thing. Oh, man, how did I dodge all that? Whoa! Electricity. This is just so creative, man. This must, these, these must have taken forever. Oh, I see, I see. Got to actually use these things as blocks. Good, good. Getting slightly confused by basic ideas. Oh, I love it. It, it kind of takes the idea of those brain stems from uh, Antibeth that never made it over. And works with them a little more. I like it. So I can get a few shots in while I was doing this, right? Not really. It's a little hard to do. This guy's kind of a puzzle boss a little bit. Whoa! Oh my god. Oh my. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Okay, I think we got him. Are we going to have to fight the little worm dude now? No, he's just going to disappear. Oh, no, no. We are going to have to fight him. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. It ain't so easy. Okay, I think this might be our last boss. Oh, no, we've done it. We, 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 we have beaten it. We have beaten it. But, yeah, slightly shorter episode than the normal, I realize. Um, normally, 
obviously look to do something a little longer than that but i didn't want the chances of us not seeing those guys show up in a regular run i wanted to make sure we're able to see them all consequent like back to back to back in a sequence rather than it being like Ooh, are we going to actually see any of them or am I going to get lucky enough to see this boss or it's going to be like, oh, we see one the entire run. I thought better off, let's do the challenge and showcase them all. And then in future runs, these guys, I'll keep this mod on and these guys will be like nicely smattered throughout each of our runs. And I think that's a good way of doing it. Um, as you saw, there's kind of a smattering of ones everywhere. We can actually, I think if we go into a regular run here... Um, just take a look. I'm pretty sure there's a bestiary. Yes, there is. So in the bestiary here, we can actually take a little look at some of the lore for some of these guys, which is pretty cool. So we've got Sparky the Electric Menace. It's through the stages. Sparky's electrifying good looks are irresist and its irresistible charm will capture the hearts of millions, or at least that's what he tells himself. What an interesting Hung uh, what an interest in Hungarian politics and Sigma culture. He's ready to take the world by storm. Interesting. We got Bart here, the hot shit. Bart's inception was an accident. Starting out as a prank gone wrong, um, through what can only be described as malicious misfortune, Bart gained a questionable amount of sentience and uses it to terrorize the halls of the burning basement. Pretty cool. We got the Radical Rat, the vulgar vermin. Radical Rat uh, fears no man. His uh, undeniable swag and pyrotechnic expertise makes for someone whose fear is uh, who's feared and respected. You don't want to get on his bad side, and all that would take um, is asking about how he injured his tail. Hmm. Um, let's have a little look. See, we've got to go over this side. We've got Mirage here, the hungry apparition. Mirage is a gluttonous and playful spirit when they're not drinking litres of suspicious water from downpour pits. Mirage can be seen bouncing around, crushing the poor souls who were unwillingly chose to participate in play date. Although seemingly innocent, underneath the surface, Mirage holds a sinister secret. I really like these, these are cool. Um, the Fecal Fighter. Scatman's bowels produce a seemingly endless supply of dangerous poop boulders which he um, learned to weaponize against his foes. If you ever have the displeasure of being stuck alone in a room with him, prepare to be in, uh, info dumped about why toilet paper and mummification is the future of fashion. <laughs> and we got uh, Mozzie here, the plump pest. Mozzie is what happens when you give one sucker way too much power. She can be found filled to the brim with blood, poison, tar, and more. She uses an extraordinarily long um, pro what the hell is that? Probosis? To siphon the blood out of any living being she meets. This one, Dust Devil, is probably my favourite, I think, design-wise. The Deadly Whirlwind. Dust Devil is a restless demon manifested from the ashes of the fallen monsters. She'd be slowly growing over the uh, she's been slowly growing over the course of hundreds of years with no end in sight. Her ash is the source of her power, and she won't hesitate to turn you into fuel. Lovely. We got uh, Papa Plum here. The protective parent. Papa Plum's super strength uh, makes him a formidable foe, and he isn't too afraid to do whatever it takes to avenge his daughter. When he isn't busy beating up punks that's getting in his way, he enjoys practicing his acoustic guitar in front of his kid. <laughs> We've got the trash bit of Kadabra, natural ball musician. He may not be able to see uh, or speak for that matter, but his impressive sorcery dazzles the niche audiences of the dank depths. Of course, he could never do it without the help of his lovely assistant. Is that the one that chopped his head off? The Wall of Damnation. Uh, it's a cursed wall which harvests the souls of unperspective victims who mistake him for a door to the boss room. Anyone who draws near will be quickly pulled into his chamber, at which there is um, very little hope of escape, and their spirits are harvested for his collection. Uh, Tulip, the wilting rose. She's a rotting corpse wrapped within another rotting, rotting corpse. Tulip uses her razor-sharp talons at the end of her tentacles to latch onto walls and move around the room to strike her opponents. <laughs> Duke of Flies, the bloat. The super, superfluous parent. They took a perfect being filled with love and hope and mangled it beyond recognition for shame. For shame. The once widely beloved and revered Duke of Flies have been overtaken by the widely beloved and despised bloat. The bloat has harnessed the almighty power of the Duke, combining their strengths together to make an unstoppable force. And lastly, we have Brain Rot, the festered mind. Brain Rot died a long time ago, but that didn't um, didn't deter uh, Ted the Parabite from claiming it as a new home. 
Ted takes control of the rotting cerebellum, sometimes commanding his roommates to fight for him. He doesn't know what to effectively, uh, how to effectively control his host, but the small power he does harness makes him a force to be reckoned with. Really interesting. I love the fact there's a bestiary like that. That's really cool. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.